Hello all, good morning. So, uh, in this current scenario, we understand the climate change, environment impact, and global warming, and all this stuff. So, so here I'm not going to talk about the, uh, the Ethereum blockchain and some kind of uh, energy utilization, energy consumption by the public blockchain networks. So, I'm going to talk about the how you can use blockchain to uh, uh, impact the some climate change, sustainability goals, and carbon accounting, carbon credit tokenization, all those things. So, so in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the three things. First is about the use cases and what is happening in the current scenarios in the globally. Second, uh, what my company, Instant Future Tech, doing in the space. And third, like uh, Hyperledger having a uh, climate action accounting uh, SIGs, and what we are doing there. Uh, so, and how the Hyperledger community is helping to be run that initiatives. So uh, actually, I put video to play, but it's not playing. So I think, but anybody, everyone understand the climate change, global warming, what is happening in the Europe's global warming space, uh, floods in India or floods in uh, Pakistan, and and that's why United Nations SDG put the goals to to how to, we can reduce the carbon footprint by 2030 and net zero by 2050. And all this COP26 and different Paris Agreement, all this stuff. So how, and I think, so I think this, these are the 17 sustainable development goals uh, where we have no poverty, zero hunger, and all these multiple goals. And there, especially the goal number 12, where we talk about the sustainable supply chain, and goal number 13, where the climate actions. So, and I, I think uh, blockchain could, be very helpful to tackle these two goals very effectively using because it's a trust and transparency, transparent technology. And uh, when we talk about the uh, sustainability or uh, climate change, we always heard about all these terms like carbon offset, CO2 emission, reduction, renewable energy, and greenhouse gases, CO2, and all this stuff. We keep hearing all these things. So, and so, uh, specific these two goals uh, can be achieved and can be uh, very effectively uh, uh, help to achieve the SDG goal by United Nations blockchain because blockchain have uh, trust, transparency, and traceability inbuilt. So. Uh, how uh, actually in the upper side you can see like in the climate action we are how we are taking the different actions and measurement to prevent the climate change and in the below side you can see like how the digital world or how the blockchain or any other kind of technologies could properly account the this uh, climate change or climate action so generally if you don't if, if you don't able to uh, account the proper what the carbon footprint emissions you're trying to Save and like for example, suppose uh, every country and every state has their their specific goal to achieve some some targets. But if you're not doing a proper accounting, so like currently the well, Vera and Gold Standard having such some kind some kind of their mechanism to, uh, for example, if someone doing some renewable energy projects in India somewhere, and now he need to submit the how much carbon footprint they're saving and then carbon credits to be issued by the Vera and Gold Standard. But all is centralized repositories and uh, whatever the projects submitting the data, they need to trust. So if, if we build the system with blockchain and we record the, all the carbon footprint, in the, whether in the supply chain, whether in the renewable energy projects, whether the deforestation and all this stuff, you could properly account the carbon accounting and uh, climate, climate accounting. And then this will help you to measure the how much carbon footprint you actually saving. And then... Uh, in the second part, you could use the, this carbon footprint saving as a carbon credit tokens, which is a, a maybe you see in the, some carbon credit, lots of marketplace coming, carbon NFTs are there in the market. So I will talk about some success stories of some already available solutions, implementation in blockchain, Hyperledger, whether Ethereum or any other. So, and why blockchain? So because blockchain is a trust and openness and transparency built into design. and. Uh, that way, whatever the you are uh, accounting, you can do some kind of trust with that data, because because uh, uh, in in the 
whether it is a sustainable supply chain, whether it is a renewable energy projects, all the mechanisms you could have all your data, data point, ESG reporting properly using the blockchain. So uh, these are some use cases in the specific uh, industry wise in the like renewable energy, there's a REC certificate, tokenization of energy, peer to peer trading of energy. So even lots of use cases implemented in a, like power ledger, one of the one of the company implementing the peer to peer energy trading and REC certificate. There's a energy blockchain consortium. There's a energy web foundation. Then climate change, where you have the climate accounting, carbon accounting, and credit tokenization, carbon offset marketplace, and then even there are lots of investment and efforts by the different green fintech and the VC fund who want to invest in the some clean tech uh, financing startups or companies. So, like for example, there is a circulate fund uh, in who invests in the circular economy projects. Uh, and in the in the last two years, they invested uh, in the Asia Pacific couple of start, startups in the plastic recycle and uh, traceability uh, uh, solutions. Then ESG reporting because every cor every corporate need to be responsible what they are uh, taking measures and taking some to achieve their ESG compliance goals. That thing. Circular economy which is a, a bigger use case in the plastic recycle whether sustainable supply chain or like extended producer responsibility. So for example in the uh, in the Government have some kind of compliance to whatever the plastic or e-waste you are generating, you need to be responsible for that to be recycled. So, and there are lots of fraud happen in this kind of thing because uh, how you will ensure, like for example, is Coca-Cola and Pepsi are producing millions of bottles every year. So, as per the norms, they need to recycle some certain of the their plastic what they are generating. So, even even we are working with some customer in India for the similar space. So, I will talk about that in later. So. All this we discuss is just just not the use case on some theoretical use case. There a lot is happening in the in the market, and people are implementing it. So I will cover some use cases specific to the industries. So like first is the carbon credit. So you can see the measurement. Like suppose the Nori is one of the carbon credit marketplace based on blockchain. They having a uh, multiple uh, carbon renewal projects and uh, millions of. Uh, uh, Millions of uh, uh, paid to the farmers and all the things, and then Climate DAO, which is one of the decentralized autonomous organization for uh, carbon credit market. The World Bank even uh, started some kind of project for uh, carbon offset, the Flow Carbon, and this last two projects happening in India. This uh, is a Kichi to token and the Who Carbon NFT. So they are even kind of measuring the carbon footprint in the food traceability supply chain and how much you are saving the carbon footprint using the best sustainable agriculture farming uh, practices and then tokenizing is the NFTs and uh, trading in the secondary marketplace. These are some use cases which is, are implemented in renewable energy sector. So like first customer is, is my customer Bitlumens. So they are, they have a, they have a, this is a, uh, Switzerland based customer and they are implementing some kind of renewable energy projects microgrid in India and in a rural area where they are uh, kind of trying to provide the renewable energy using the solar microgrid and for with them we actually we did the carbon accounting for their how much uh, how much carbon footprint they are saving while people using the renewable energy in instead of the, their regular energy kind of thing. And then tokenizing those carbon credit in some kind of whether it's public blockchain, like we were using the Polygon for that one. And there are a couple of like Power Ledger, which is an Australian company using blockchain for P2P energy and REC certificate. Energy Web Foundation is a couple of REC projects doing it in Central America. And then the last one, this is a, one of the state in India, uh, Uttar Pradesh, which is a larger state in India. They partner with Ministry of Power and uh, India Smart Grid Task Force. To implementing such kind of peer-to-peer -peer energy trading and carbon accounting of those energy footprint. And another a larger uh, segment is a circular economy project. So even, even less circular having a, a bigger projects in a battery recycling or plastic recycling, the recycle go, circularize, ever ledger. In my company is also part of such, such an initiative, some projects we are doing in India for some plastic recycler. Uh, complete waste management. Like, imagine you're using the blockchain waste management recycling process. Uh, how 
how the any plastic you are stopping to go to the ocean and then and then uh, recycling this plastic and then uh, measure the carbon footprint saving and then tokenize it so all this is happening uh, in the industry and another is sustainable supply chain uh, some responsible farming or responsible uh, supply chain so like like this is adit birla group which is a uh, fashion industry they are they are kind of they kind of measuring the carbon footprint in their uh, fashion retail supply chain and then tokenizing it so uh, they generally use some kind of fibers to uh, fibers to create the cloths and uh, manufacture the cloths and from where they are importing and from where how they are using sustainable practice so like this is mine hub this is provenance the circular their ever ledger and we are working with uh, some customer in the space so we just discussed some couple of examples but there a lot more so as per this uh, blockchain for sustainability weekly uh, white uh, newsletter there are more than 350 projects already using blockchain for such kind of use case whether the nft or whether there is a carbon accounting or maybe climate change or esg agriculture supply chains to all people are implementing so uh, so that i discussed about in general what is happening in the industry what what is the market size and what people are doing so in the next section i will talk about the what we are doing in india and what doing with the customers so i have a couple of case studies what we doing so this is this is we doing for one of the plastic recycler in company in mumbai so they do uh, millions of uh, plastic millions of ton plastic recycles every year and, and generally their customer like pepsi coca cola and all the plastic manufacturers uh, so so as per the government norms they need to be uh, epr compliant means like they need to be uh, at the end of the year they need to be uh, compliant with the how much pa- plastic they are recycling so so using the our trustian platform what we are doing we are kind of uh, onboarding all the different uh, uh, supply chain in the waste management like suppose waste aggregator and then some kabadi wala in the normal people and then recycler and then some intermediate manufacturing of this recycled plastic and then how the uh, you are using this recycled product to manufacture something something new even like yesterday i was uh, just visited one of the stores in uh, ireland and very interesting to see all their cloths having some kind of like uh, responsible cotton or recycled product so all all are implementing but but maybe they are not using blockchain but how you as a consumer can trust what they are saying is a uh, is a uh, uh, recycled products or not but blockchain you can use that way so that we doing with one of the customer in mumbai and and then uh, similar kind of things we are doing one of the some kind of regulatory framework where we going to become the part of that sandbox so there is a international finance services authority who provide some kind of innovative solution or innovative sandboxes to the investment uh, aspect so we using our product to in the first segment we are recording recording all the waste recycling process and how much carbon footprint we saving and then in the second segment we created the some kind of carbon credit marketplace out of this carbon uh, footprint saving be done in a waste recycling process and now earlier only like suppose some uh, institutions or corporate going to be investor on the some such kind of carbon credit uh, offset but now is a normal consumer can go to this platform and can uh, offset their uh, carbon credit for example suppose if you traveling from maybe uh, uh india to us and how much uh, how much carbon footprint by your uh, traveler travel so even even uh, i seen some uh, example where uh, like suppose make my trip this is one of the website in india for flight booking they having a such kind of facility after you travel you can offset your carbon footprint whatever you uh, generated while you are traveling so all this thing can be happen or is already happening in the space so we are part of this uh, uh sandbox where we are experimenting and uh, piloting this kind of initiative where we are uh recycling the waste and carbon footprint saving and then 
some kind of green financing or sustainable financing option for the retail investors. And these are the some kind of the in the generally in the circular economy, especially in the whether it's a e-waste or whether it's a plastic recycle, whether it's a battery. This is a couple of uh, benefit in the. And uh, this project actually we did for one of the customer in a re renewable energy sector. So, so they are like uh, uh, this uh, uh, Switzerland based company actually uh, implemented such kind of project in a rural India for uh, for a renewable energy uh, uses for the consumer. But uh, and they also implemented such kind of power grid and smart meters to to measure like how much energy consumption earlier they're doing with the coal energy or some water energy and now they are using the solar energy so how much carbon footprint will be going to be saved and even even not just the this data but other data like suppose what is the uh, household income what they are doing and uh, their uh, their expenses and all the economic specific data and even even you can also fulfill the SDG goal number one via because you now know understand like how the farmers or maybe rural people are are using the electricity and then uh, tokenizing this energy in a, some kind of blockchain whether it's a public blockchain or private blockchain is depend on the whether you want to trade this token in a, some kind of secondary marketplace or just you want to be just on the within ecosystem so this is the typical thing we did there so uh, there's a smart meter in the left and then you are measuring all the your energy consumption and energy details and then uh, there are already predefined uh, uh, predefined formulas or predefined uh, standards available like for example if you're using uh, solar energy so how much carbon footprint you going to save and then uh, audit certify this carbon credit and then uh, tokenize whether the nft is whether some kind of uh, erc20 token and then you could trade this token in a, some kind of carbon credit platform where whether it is some institutional buyers or whether some investments or some retail investors can offset their carbon footprints. So, so this is our uh, one of the supply chain traceability trace chain platform which we are using for multiple uh, projects like whether it's a food traceability, whether it's an agriculture supply chain, whether it's a plastic recycler uh, for the traceability. So here is example of the uh, food traceability but it could be uh, plastic recycle or e-waste or battery so that i talked about the what we are doing in this space and uh, here uh, let's understand what in the hyperledger communities we are doing so in hyperledger we i think uh, before two years we started one of the climate action accounting special interest group to start the standardizing and data points and some kind of uh, some kind of source code which we can use to uh, uh, whether it's a greenhouse supply chain or whether it's a greenhouse gases or sustainable supply chain or renewable energy or even what are the data available uh, for the carbon footprint saving how we can use all this data and build some kind of uh, uh, open source platform open source projects so that we're doing, doing it so uh, there is one uh, carbon accounting uh, uh, working group in the climate action accounting group so there we actually implemented the hybrid blockchain kind of solution using uh, hyperledger fabric and uh, other uh, ethereum blockchain evm based uh, protocols so the similar way like first we are recording all the carbon emission footprint saving and take calculating the how much carbon emissions we saving and then tokenizing on it and also we added the third layer on the kind of DAO platform so uh, even not just we as a centralized authority approving this carbon footprint saving but we uh, onboarded such, such kind of some uh, third party companies or third party people who are environment friendly and want to be contribute to the space so is a is a completely uh, hybrid blockchain kind of uh, use case uh, private blockchain fabric for recording the carbon emissions and calculating the impact and then tokenizing this carbon footprint uh, using a uh, EVM based blockchain and then uh, even not generating a token directly but we using some kind of DAO based uh, platform to generating a carbon grid tokens so even uh, for this particular uh, particular solution we actually uh, 
won the first place in the IBM call for code this year. And recently, even uh, I'm the part of the TSC, TSC committee. So recently, we also identified uh, this particular project to be nominated as a as a graduated project or the next level project because it's impacting and it's doing lots of stuff and we have complete code base and already running in production. Uh, so anybody can go and uh, uh, tokenize their carbon credit uh, footprints. It's completely open source code. Thank you. So any questions? Yeah, is there? Oh, you can repeat the question. Yeah, yeah. So, thank you. Great, great presentation. So, the question is for me so, obviously, you're creating carbon credits which have monetary value. Yeah. Of course, they have to be accepted then by people who trade those monetary values. Correct. Are you at that stage yet? Are, your, are the captioned uh, carbon credits that you generate? Do they already have monetary value, or is it not at that stage yet? Yeah. So I got the question about the uh, value of the tokens you're generating using the, your uh, this thing. So, like currently in the market, like there's a Vera and Gold standard is a, some uh, central authorities or registries where you could list your projects and then uh, get the, your credit certified. There's a this is one way, but this is centralized one. So, and uh, other thing uh, you could use blockchain and record this thing because like you trusting the some kind of third party, right? Uh, like uh, where I'm going to stand for the carbon credit, what the certifying. So similarly, if you create this system, because where I'm going to is not a, some kind of uh, government body, they are private registries. Similarly, if you can create the some kind of trust and transparent system, maybe the blockchain based registries, so I think everybody is going to trust it. Maybe it will initially you need to face some challenges, but and, and that's why in the this hyperledger climate action accounting group, we added the DAO the decentralized autonomous organization. So in whatever the carbon credit you are certifying is not certifying by some any particular agency, but whatever the different participant available, where for example, suppose some regulator or some uh, uh, investment fund or some even some normal people like who care about the environment or suppose for example, suppose, suppose so there's a one project in India and you list as a, as a carbon footprint, suppose uh, maybe thousand uh, credits, but current process like there is like someone need to be go and audit that uh, that project and list in the Vera Gold Standard, and this is the current mechanism. But if if people around, for example, suppose in India who knows that project, come to the, this DAO platform or DAO based system and voting for the particular carbon footprint saving, and then when you reach some kind of uh, decision making, for example, like suppose seventy percent people agree like this is a genuine project. And then you automatically issue the tokens to the particular project. So that we added in the Hyperledger Climate Action Accounting's uh, mm -hmm. uh, solution. Yes, yeah, so I'm not sure I, I got a full answer to the question there. So is it plugged into the normal hydrocarbon credit market yet or not? Not yet, but I think okay. uh, it's available. Anybody can sure. just be part of the system and yeah. All right, thank you. Yeah. And like, you, like yours, mine. Um, the carbon credit system I worked on that was a retail marketplace is not in production. But yeah. as part of the research, I actually had to go out and figure out how carbon credits are actually traded today. Mm -hmm. And so carbon credit trading is not new. It's been out there yeah. for a long time. And in fact, the marketplaces do exist, but they're all wholesale marketplaces, right? Correct. So uh, carbon is bought and sold all over the world today. And in a sense, in at a wholesale level, it's done. So companies are listing, in a sense, what they're looking to buy, what they're willing to pay, what they're bidding for. Um, you're also getting offers on the other side of the fence. So it's it's not um, a new kind of a trade. It's just the fact that you've got a system now that could be used yeah. automatically that's an open source platform for that. Yeah, I think carbon credit is not a new, it's a, uh, happening from many years. But how you can bring trust and transparency to those, uh, those things, those ideas? Yeah, it's a, right. That's a big deal because that's big deal. in the current one now, 
the way that a lot of those marketplaces work. They just actually, they're out on the internet. You can get a URL to them and you go look and you can see what in a sense is available, what's traded, but it's all based on bid and offers. And it's like, I would call Conlish up and I'd say, okay, you know, I see you're offering at $20 a ton. I'll, I'll pay you 19, will you take it? You know, that kind of thing. So that's really how it has yeah. been done. Yeah, and, and, and also that there are lots of projects, even they are not doing their carbon accounting. So even I interacted with one of the uh, kind of uh, cement manufacturer in, uh, I think, UAE. They not accounted their carbon footprint from last five years. And due to the norms, and now they realize that there is a carbon market out there. So for that thing, how they will go? They will go with the where our gold is tendered to all this recording and everything, and then they will tokenize it. So, but there's a big company, right? But for example, suppose like suppose there are many housing societies in the world using the renewable energies in the solar panels, but they are not doing any kind of accounting and not measures. So if you're not measuring such kind of footprint or savings, then how you will be achieving your SDG 30 goals like by net zero by 2030 and all these mechanisms. So so even like suppose I know my, one of my friend's company in Bangalore uh, is blockchain based some kind of uh, platform. So they invest in some kind of renewable energy projects and and generally, uh, as a retail investor can go on this platform and suppose they just want to invest, suppose $100, they can invest in this project and this recorded in the blockchain and you can really see like whatever the uh, amount I invested is really deployed in the projects. So, and so now people are aware. So even they partner with some kind of luxury car uh, dealer, dealers in India. So if any person go for buying a one big car, and they now understand like it's going to be maybe uh, carbon emission for the next five years. So as a, as a environment friendly person, maybe I will go and invest in such kind of projects. Like suppose my car is going to be pollute this much the environment. So let's invest in such kind of projects. So already this kind of things are already happening and people are aware. So in the future, I believe is going to be big space and blockchain is going to play a very important role. So Every country is even like recently uh, Indian government is uh, even kind of uh, making a law like you can't export the carbon credit generated in India because because currently like uh, uh, generally uh, Europe is the largest market for carbon credit buyers and uh, India where lots of uh, carbon footprint projects are implemented with the renewable energy all these things but generally people are they just exporting to the other countries. So, and there are lots of government initiative in all this uh, area. Any more question? Yeah, yeah. Mike. Uh, thank you for your talk. Um, I guess I was hoping you could provide more general feedback on what you're seeing in the market that you're in around the drivers for adopting these systems. So whether it's, you know, to generate credits for, for value or if it's more user driven, um, being, you know, asking their companies to do that, or if it's more legislation, this is something they have to do, um, or whatever you see the main drivers are. So I think one thing is legislation and another is the, like, now people like us understand like how much is uh, impacting the climate uh, in the recent times we've seen the, this kind of uh, global warming issues and uh, even even like just mentioned like yesterday I went to the island market and I buying some clothes so in the, every clothes I was seeing some kind of like this uh, sustainable cotton or uh, recycled pla recycled plastic is, is very good actually because and uh, and we people like feel happy at some kind of uh, thing like we are contributing something to the environment so, so I know one of the my one of friends' company in uh, India uh, called in I can take a name Infinichens. So they uh, onboarded uh, kind of millions of customers on their platform, uh, the farmers actually who are generating some kind of cotton in India, and uh, there are a couple of customer like Wellspun and some Prithvi Intex and how they are, how this farming done for the cotton, what kind of fertilizers, what kind of pesticide they are using, and the, even the farmer's economy, uh, everything. And then, end-to-end traceability of the, your cloth. 
and this is live in production people are using it so if you are buying a t-shirt or shirt you can just uh, scan the qr and get the end to end details about thing and even like consumer suppose if you want to be donate something you can donate to the particular farmers out there so i think couple of initiatives even we are working with a couple of customer on the same segment whether it's a fashion retail supply chain whether plastic recycle e waste battery any more question okay thank you